Uh, thank you for joining on a Friday afternoon. For those of you, I saw some names that um, that I know uh, who know me know that I love teaching about mindfulness, emotional intelligence, and resilience, and all that fun stuff. We will be doing a mindful meditation in a little bit, uh, so it'll be a great way to end the Friday. And so I just want to say welcome to this little um, webinar that we are that we are conducting. So. Um, to give a little bit about me, I'm Susan Robertson, and the other person that you see here, and I'll have her share a little bit about herself as well. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Lindsay's Conscious Business. I'm the author of Real Leadership, Wakened Wisdom. I have a book, Real Culture, Four, Four Steps to Build Your Competitive Advantage. It's not yet published, but it will be. Um, one of my favorite little booklets that I've uh, uh, authored is Dreaming Your Purpose into Being, and more recently, I added a chapter to this book, The Secret Sauce of Organizational Transformation. Um, my background as it relates to mindfulness and all of that, I am a registered yoga teacher, a kundalini yoga teacher. I've also been reg a registered yoga teacher of restorative yoga and nod yoga. Nod yoga is about using sound. I've, I've meditated for over 36 years. I'm certified in a thing called Brain Master, where you put electrodes on your head and measure states of consciousness and um, how you can move into more relaxed uh, states, but also how can you change behavior that may be ingrained, and, and uh, that's called neurofeedback. On the business side, um, I am a mentor and coach, and I've coached people into the C-suite as well as into CEO roles. Uh, I've been doing organizational change for close to, for more than 32 years, um, leadership development, um, doing five-day workshops, four levels of that for a number of years. And from the, the names that I saw, some of you have been graduates of that and have been doing a lot of leadership and team coaching. And all of those things are things I'd love to do. And so Cindy, you wanna give a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone, um, I, I'm Cindy Medaglia. I joined Lindsay's Conscious Business in uh, 2019 after uh, a company that I worked for in the energy sector in Cleveland, Ohio, offered me a golden parachute after 34 years. So I jumped in, retired into uh, becoming an entrepreneur, executive coach, and consultant um, with Lindsay's Conscious Business. And I love every day of my life uh, since retirement um, because I get to change uh, the world one leader at a time. Great. Thanks, Cindy. And um, if any of you have a question or if you want to pop in or add something, either put it in the chat or ask to speak, please feel free to ask any questions as we go along. And Cindy will be monitoring the chat and she will also be monitoring if somebody wants to um, uh, speak up and ask a question that way. So just to give a little background about Lindsay's, everyone generally asks, what does Lindsay's mean? It is a Latin root, um, but that it actually means to have keen vision and insight. And then what we do at the organizational level um, is we help people explore and strengthen and transform their leadership, their teams or their teamwork, cultural performance, and then bottom line results. And this is the kind of work Cindy and I enjoy doing together. It's been a lot of fun. Up until two years ago, my business partner was my husband, so clearly a lot of nepotism in the work that I've done over the years. So let's start here. Um, I'm not sure how many of you feel this way from time to time. I know I get that way, uh, that I feel a little stressed right now. And again, what's really nice about having a family member in your business, or sometimes maybe not so nice, is that when you're stressed, at least they have some understanding when your bad hair day comes out. Um, and you're able to, you know, because of the love and the camaraderie that you have, you can uh, uh, have, you know, we have some forgiveness. And there's been times Cindy had to forgive me because of my stressed reactions. So I'm a little stressed right now. Just turn around, leave quietly. Nobody will get hurt. Well, the other thing we can do is that when we're a little stressed, of course, what do we need to do? We have to take care of ourselves. And if we can really learn how to take care of ourselves a little bit better, go a little bit deeper, then we can then share that state of consciousness that's in, on the inside of ourselves rather than our stressed state. And that's what we'll be working on today. So just to give you some background, um, a little bit of uh, some stats, according to the American Institute of, Stre of Stress right now, 93% of people at work, and you know we're inside of organizations, many of you are part of organizations we work with, 
Um, 93% of people are saying I'm stressed at work. And particularly with the, the changeover from pandemic to endemic, from being at home to being, do I go all the way back to work? Am I hybrid? What does this mean? And 73% of people, according to the American Institute of Stress, uh, it's impacting our physical and emotional health. We already know how much um, stress does impact us. And, you know, when we're in a constant state of fight or flight response, our immune system goes down. And when our immune system goes down, we are much more prone to medical issues that maybe we would not be when, when we are in a better state of consciousness and we have less stress. 63%, and this has been something I've been watching since 2020, 63% of most people are ready to quit. And before the pandemic, because a lot of um, our clients have asked us, well, what was it back in 2019? 2019, the normal rate was about 35% were ready to quit. So this has been sustained ever since the pandemic started that it, it kept, we watched it, Cindy and I watched it, this number kept creeping up, creeping up. And this is where it is today. About 63% are looking around saying, you know, this isn't it for me. And given, given where the, the economy is going, you know, some people are going to hold back until they can find something just to make sure that they're going to be okay and they're going to land okay. But if you have somebody that is there who really doesn't want to be there, then they're not going to be performing the way that they could is, is if they had their whole heart and their whole energy in it. And that's why there's a, a you know big thing called quiet quitting. And then just overall, forget about work, but just overall stress, about 55% of us are experiencing, um, are in a stress state nearly every day. And so that's where meditation, mindfulness, and, uh, and, and building inner resilience is so important because this is about taking care of ourselves. And again, if you have any questions, if you want to share out loud, or if you want to put something in the chat, please feel free. So I've always liked this. I found this um, many years ago. Is your mind full or are you mindful? And I don't know about you, but when I'm really stressed, one, I don't, I don't sleep well, I get insomnia, and my brain looks right about like that. There's so many things that are going on inside of my head, and I don't know where to start, and it's hard to focus. And, um, it, and then even getting to the state of mindfulness becomes a bit more difficult because, you know, when, when we're in that state where we're, our brains are chock full of this kind of stuff, we are actually experiencing, and I actually say it's, you're experiencing the F word, fear. And most people don't even recognize that as fear, but that's fear. When we have that much stuff going on and we can't stop, we're fe feeling anxious. That's just fear light. We're fe feeling anxious. We're feeling worried. We're feeling all of that to me is fear light. It's fear. So if we can name it, we can start to tame it. What's the fear that I'm having right now? And generally speaking, and I know it is, it's true for me, I'm afraid of either one, letting someone down or two, failing. Be and generally I fail because I let somebody down. So, but we have to understand what it is that's really driving us. It's causing us to, you know, be on this hyper vigilant. I've got to, I got to do this. I got to do that. Think of this, think of that. Oh my God, I forgot kinds of stuff and feeling like you're on that hamster wheel. So then how do we move from this mindful to becoming mindful? So one of the things that, um, that I've focused on a lot in over 32 years, I've come to the conclusion that it all starts with inner resilience. And that's what my book was about, Real Leadership, Wake to Wisdom. It's what the Real Leadership Model stands for, resilience, engagement, agility, and leading with wisdom. But it starts with our inner resilience. Because, and that's the heart of our emotional intelligence, right? How, how resilient we are, how well we manage our own stresses, how well we understand ourselves determines how well we engage, empower, collaborate, and develop others. It also determines how agile and adaptable we are. And so if, if I'm in a state of stress and I am worried about getting things done, many times I might not be able to be as flexible. I might be over controlling or I might be frozen to make a decision. The second thing that's really important is that, again, depending on our resilience will depend on how wise we are in our leadership. I know that um, I've often warned my employees yeah, you know, because sometimes, even though I teach this, I still have my bad hair days, that if, if I'm really under stress, sometimes 
uh, Ms. Robato comes out, some of you who are old enough will recognize the song, where instead of being nice and gentle and, hey, do you mind, you know, I start barking out orders. And um, and, and and it's with, um, I'll say, emphasis, right, Cindy, um, that, that, that it comes out. And I'm not in that place of leading with wisdom, with servant leadership for greater good, because I'm just focused on getting it done and I need you to do this now kind of thing. And so resilience is such a strong piece um, of how we show up, not just at work, but in our life. And so then it's always a matter. I have a, a teacher friend of mine that always says it's not whether you get out of balance, it's how fastly, how fast do you get back in balance? And balance is always you you don't stay put in balance. Balance is always a balancing act. It's a moving target. It's not a set target. So the more resilience you can have within yourself, more forgiveness that you can have within yourself, more you can feel gratitude, then you're going to lead with much more of a sense of purpose. You're going to empower others and engage others. You're not going to feel afraid of not being able to fail because if you're engaging others in a really good way, people are going to, they're going to die for you in many ways because they enjoy working with you. And they'll give you their best. And then if you're able to be more adaptable, people are going to feel like you've heard them that they, and that you've listened. And so that's why we look at this as like, if you can become a real leader, starting with resilience, then in many ways, things can fall into place. And that's why I wanted to focus really on one piece of how do you get back to balance and why I wanted to focus on the meditation mindfulness part of this. Oops. So when you take a look at mindfulness and emotional intelligence, you've got to start with awareness and insight. And um, this, this can be a little tricky sometimes because there are things that we are unconscious of. I like to call them counter commitments. So I believe I want to be a certain way. I want to act a certain way. I want to get to a certain goal. But I may have belief structures within myself that will hold me back. And that's a counter commitment. So if we don't know the unconscious behaviors that we have that prevent us from moving forward, then we're not going to get to where we want to go just in life. And so how do you gain that awareness and insight? Meditation is one way. Of course, you can do 360 feedback. You can get feedback from your friends, your family, all of that fun stuff. But meditation allows you to go inside of yourself and what I like to say, get off the hamster wheel in order for you to be able to, you know, take a look at, I always like to say, replay the tape. Now I know that ages me because we don't use tape anymore. We use digital tape, but you know, every good soccer team, every good U S football team, every single sports team will, after they've played a game, They'll celebrate what they did well, and they will replay the tape to see how well did they execute the strategy that they wanted to play. We don't generally do that in business, and we don't really like to because feedback feels bad. But if we don't replay the tape of our own behavior and how well we're leading our teams or replay the tape on how did I manage that interaction, then there's no way for us to develop, improve, and grow. And so if you really want to improve, you know, meditation is a way to gain more insight. And then that in itself will help you improve your emotional intelligence because emotional intelligence starts with self-awareness. And when you when you're able to really see yourself, you know, I was, I was in a coaching call with somebody today who's being a coach to me. And he said, Sue, I just want to hold up the mirror for you on this one. I want to challenge you on this one. You know, so that's a way of holding up the mirror. That's somebody else replaying the tape for me. Yeah. And I, I was watching myself, like, was I being, was I being overly agreeable? Uh, was I being, um, you know, stubborn about the thing that he was bringing up, you know, so when, when we are able to meditate, first off, then I become less stubborn within myself. I'm able to hear things that maybe I'm not seeing. And if I can get that information of the stuff I'm not seeing, I now am at choice 
to do something different. And again, if you have any questions, you want to raise your hand or whatever, let us know. And so with those three things, then you can take a look at your leadership and um, what you do and how you do it. And that impacts employee wellness. You know, I just got back from California and we were doing, um, it was all focused around employee well wellness, but it was really interesting because employee wellness is just an aspect of culture and culture is driven by leadership and how people behave. And so it kept coming back to where do you start? You know, and some people were moving immediately into corporate wellness programs. Well, that's great, but, you know, and I can go to my resource EAP and maybe I can get a Fitbit if I walk five miles a day and I can get a discount on my insurance and things like that. Those are, those are needed. Those are important. But then at the same time, where the stress happens is in the day-to-day -day interaction on the team or with me and my, my um, boss. So if I really want to be effective and powerful, of course, if I can start with myself and build my resilience, then I can share that and I can teach my employees how to do it as well. And I can teach my family. So, all right, still no questions. I'm going good, all right. So I wanna start with mindfulness. So we, had, we saw this before, is you're mindful or are you mindful? So coming from the perspective of a kundalini yoga teacher, somebody that practices meditation, one of the ways to get to mindful, and there are states beyond mindfulness, and this has been an argument of mine for some years, as I've gone to some of these conferences like Wisdom 2.0 and things like that, the very first thing you've got to do is learn how to quiet your mind. That's step one. And that, in order to quiet your mind, the very first thing you have to do is understand what's in your mind and understand that you are not your mind. You know, if you can observe your thoughts and the question becomes is who's doing the observing and then who's doing the thinking. So then how do you quiet your mind? This is where breath work comes in. And I'm going to actually talk about breath work in a moment. And then from there, you can become uh, mindful if you have a quiet mind. So what does mindful really mean? And what does mindful leadership really mean? Well, and, and, and John Kabat-Zinn, I was watching him, I was at a workshop with him one day and he's sort of the father right now of mindfulness. And he finally said it about two years ago. He said, well, you know, an assassin behind a gun is mindful. Their mind is very quiet. Their body is very still. They can feel their heart beating. They are aware of their breath. And they're fully and completely in the moment. That's mindfulness. Is when you see it, if you look up mindfulness on, you know, if you Google it, mindfulness is being in the present moment, completely present. It's you and me. I'm paying attention to you. I'm aware of how I'm responding. And so that's a state to help you build emotional intelligence. Now, no mind, which is something that most people don't talk about unless you're in meditative communities or yoga or things like that. No mind, I like to equate that to the state of flow. And the state of flow, uh, I've watched sports team. I think sports teams are, I, I'm not big into sports. I'm big into watching sports to watch their strategy and to see how well they're getting into flow with each other. And what's happening is same, same is true with, with tennis, especially tennis, because you can see when somebody really gets into flow, they stop overthinking their shots. It's almost like they know where the ball is going to be even before their opponent hits it. That's in the state of flow. When, when, when you are completely, it's, it's, it's like mindfulness plus plus in that, in that way. And when you are in that state, everything's calm, everything's quiet. You are in the present moment and you're doing a lot of movement at the same time, but you have access to a greater wisdom than you would have when, when because mindfulness for most people is I am more centered and I'm more focused on something. Think of the sharpshooter. You know, whereas when you're in a state of flow, it's almost like you're 
uh, mind has expanded to a broader state and that you can see many things all at once. And, um, you know, an old movie, maybe some of you have seen is the, um, the last samurai. And there's that beautiful moment where the, you know, Tom Cruise is learning how to work with the sword and he stopped and the, the, his, his teacher then says, you know, mind on this mind on that too many minds, no mind. And, and so what he was telling him and then you see, of course, because you learned it in two seconds, uh, when you're Tom Cruise on a movie, he then goes into this state of flow where he's able to use the sword without having to think about using the sword. No mind. And then there's beyond mind. We won't be going into that. But in yoga, they call that shunya. And this is a state of consciousness where you get the deep insights that help you become really creative. Um, and that that is a state of consciousness I work toward because I find if I can get to that state, then my creativity is like my whole brain thinking and and it goes sort of off the roof. But more importantly, I get ideas and information that I never thought I would have never have thought of on my own. It's almost like the universe is saying, here you go. Here's a little gift. So. Quiet mind, we have to first learn how to be quiet within ourselves. You can start that with breath work. That will then lead you to the ability to be mindful, you know, to be that sharpshooter, to be that person that can be very fully present uh, with somebody else, and then being able to go into flow. And we don't think about that in business, but it's it's a beautiful thing to see when you watch a sports team go through that and you see that they're in flow together. And when you're in flow, and, you know, like what people say, you're in lights out, right? You're unconscious in some ways in terms of your performance. And so the ability to bring that state to your work and to your life and to your being, and you, it means that you're standing on a different ground inside of yourself. And that state is a very, while even though you're doing a lot, it's a very relaxed state to be in. So let's, I've been saying about breath work and I'm, want to be really mindful of time because I want us to do this meditation. Breath work has to do with the breaths that you're taking per minute. And I can tell you when I started doing this kind of work 30 some years ago, you couldn't find stats like this because we didn't know. But when you are stressed, the average person breathes at 30 breaths per minute or more. That's what they call hyperventilating is that we're breathing so fast that we can never get enough oxygen. So if you think about you know, if cardio exercise, running, you know, uh, raising your, your heart rate is 25 to 35 breaths per minute, you can't sustain that. You know, you, you if you do, you have to really build yourself physically to be able to do long term running, you know, like marathons and things like that. But they will they work on their breath because of this, because you can't sustain that kind of breath. But if you are stressed, People naturally breathe shallow. They naturally breathe higher up in their chest. They naturally breathe quicker. And that's why they tell you, if you've ever done a, a speech or if there's been something you're getting ready to do a presentation, the first thing they'll say is take a deep breath because you're already breathing fast. That's what fear does. The F word is what fear does to us is it causes this physical reaction. So the person, the average resting breath that you do is 12 to 20. And what this actually means is, I think of it as when you're sitting on the beach or you're reading a book or you're sitting at a fireplace, you know, so your breath, and even notice as I'm starting to talk slower, are you feeling slower? Right. So that's bringing your breaths per minute down. And if you bring your breaths per minute down, there's a thing called heart rate variability. You actually improve your heart rate variability, which actually improves cardio health. So super relaxed, light meditation. People will breathe between seven to 12 breaths per minute. The ideal in terms of having good heart rate variability, and there's a, a really good organization. I love them. 
and I'll talk about them later. It's called Heart Math. I'll show it that later. They actually have an amazing app that I've used for a long time that measure that helps you to get your breath to the five to seven breaths per minute, and which actually helps improve your heart rate variability. In the layman's way, this is completely wrong by the way I'm saying it, but you'll get the idea. The heart rate variability is that the difference between the top and the bottom of your the heartbeat itself. And whether it is in rhythm or if it's out of rhythm. And you know, it it helps you, the better your heart rate variability, that means strong, the stronger your heart is. So the ideal, you know, just like you need to do cardio exercise and get your heart rate up to build the, the muscle of your heart, you also need to bring your heart rate down. And the way you do that is through breath work. One way to do that, uh, meditation, relaxation, that sort of thing. That also then brings down your um, blood pressure, everything else, so, so that you then put yourself in a state of healing. When you're breathing at this level, your body naturally goes into a state of healing where your immune system really kicks in. At average resting and above, your immune system is being taxed. At 12 breaths per minute low and lower, your immune system is being revitalized. And we need our immune systems to be revitalized. And so if you're stressed and you're not sleeping, you're not being revitalized. Your immune system is not getting the rest it needs to give you the immunity that you need to um, fight off all of the germs and everything else that's out there. And then deep reflection, deep meditation. And you've probably heard people talk about feeling at one with the universe or getting a deep aha will usually occur when people are breathing about seven to three to seven breaths per minute. So one of the things in order to improve mindfulness and to lower stress is just start with something simple like breath work. You know, and then you don't have to worry about whether you're doing it right. And there's plenty of apps that I'm going to share with you on how um, to change your breath rate so that you can move out of the stress response, the sympathetic nervous response to the parasympathetic, the relaxation response by slowing your breath down. So there's many breathwork patterns. People ask me this all the time and you know, I've become a TikTok fan and there, you know, there's so many things out there saying, no, this is the best way to breathe. This is the best way to breathe. This, this is what you need to do. Well, there's a thing called box breathing. You'll probably see that out there. Basically, it means you're doing, um, for most people, it's going to be a four by four by four by four breath. So you're breathing in for four counts, holding for four counts, breathing out for four counts, and then leaving the air out for four counts, like your lungs are empty. I find that for myself to be too quick. So for other box breathing, they may have different patterns, and that's why I have the four by six by eight by two. So you breathe in for four, you hold for six, you exhale for eight, and you hold your breath out for two. In yogic breathing, you know, in order for me to pass my, um, to become a, a certified yoga teacher, I had to do 15 by 15 by 15 by 15, which means I'm breathing one breath per minute. So you breathe in for 15 seconds, hold for 15 seconds, exhale for 15 seconds. And that last 15 seconds where you're holding your breath out, that's the hardest one because your body thinks you're going to die. And, you know, you that's when you really learn how to calm, calm yourself. And then the body begin when you learn how to do that in that last 15 seconds, it actually builds inner resilience. Some people, I call this sigh breathing where you breathe in and the way you would at the end when you've run maybe, or when you pushed yourself a short in and a long out, it's a natural response when your body's been under stress. And in exercise, you're putting your body under stress, but it's a healthy stress. But your body will naturally sigh. Or when you're when you're starting to relax, your body naturally lets go and, and that you get that long out. 
Another one that's becoming really famous, and I, I can't tell you how many TikToks I've seen on this one, is where you breathe in two or three times with a long breath. And it's sort of like, you know, um, that experience, like when you've been upset about something and you end up going, and it's like a stuttering breathing in and then it's actually really amazing if you do this breath. Again, this is something that we do naturally as we're coming out of a stressful cycle. So why not start it with this kind of breath to lead you out instead of waiting for it to until you've worked it all out? Because um, again, if you're doing this kind of breath, you are starting to move yourself. What breath work does is it moves you out of sympathetic into parasympathetic, moves you out of stress into relaxation. This is one of my favorite ones, the 10 second breath. You breathe in for 10 seconds. You breathe out for, for 10 seconds. So we have a, a four and a half day leadership workshop that we do. And we actually teach. We, I, we teach more than this, but the ones that are always on the menu, if you will, is breath of fire, which is actually a really fast breath in and out of your nose. There's a dragon's breath. You breathe in through your nose and then you're breathing out as if you're breathing out fire. Really good for um, getting rid of uh, anger and frustration. There's holotropic breath work, which is a particular kind of deep abdominal breathing that allows you to go deep within yourself. Um, that allows you to sort of replay the tape of aspects of your life so that you can get a different perspective and gain some healing. And so, when you slow your breath down, slow breathing, again, you move from stress to relaxation, and then, depending on how long you do it, into deep meditation. So, I wonder how many of you know, uh, these guys are Navy SEALs trying to pass a test. If you notice, maybe you can see it, their feet are bound. Their hands are bound. That automatically, even looking at that picture, causes me some stressful breathing. How long do you think Navy SEALs, in order to become a Navy SEALs, how many breaths per minute do they do? And I know that maybe you're putting it in the chat. I don't see it. But in order to become a Navy SEAL, you have to do a half a breath a minute. So in some ways, you're breathing in for a full 60 seconds, and then you're breathing out for a full 60 seconds. But you have to be able to do that and not just hold your breath, but you also have to be able to swim on top of it. And that's where like, I can even feel my heart going, yeah, there's no way I, yeah, probably, nope, that's probably why I'm not a Navy SEAL right now. Um but that, this is some of the training that they go through because of the things that they do that are requirements for their job. So we won't be doing that breath work, by the way. We are going to do a different breath work. So we have a question. Let me take a look. Okay. Ah, I don't see. Do you see it, Cindy? Again, if you have a question, just let me know. Oh, I think... Um, says chat is disabled. Oh, sorry about that. Well, if you want to put it in, clearly the question's working. If you want to put it in the question, I didn't realize that the chat was disabled. Okay. How do we know when a relaxation state is achieved? Okay. Generally speaking, when we are relaxed, our body naturally um, lets down, meaning that you can actually feel your muscles start to relax. And that's why I want to take you through a breath work right now, because the kind of breath I want to teach you, I have watched people somewhere right around the two minute mark move out of stress into relaxation. So you should actually feel when the relaxation response kicks in, you should actually feel like your face is relaxing. Your shoulders are relaxing. I, when I'm leading people in meditation, I like to tell them, you know, create more space between their ears and their shoulders. Because when we're in stress, we're usually, you know, we're up. And the, the breath normally slows down. And so sometimes when, when I'm teaching this breath, some people have difficulty doing this breath because the body is so used to being held up. And so 
when when you start realizing or recognizing that your body is starting to relax, physically relax, but then that means you have to be in that space where you're noticing. And we're not always noticing because we're running. So that's why people, they say you have to sit, you have to feel, I, that's my other F word, you have to feel and you have to understand how much fear there is, the two F words. Um, and to, to know what that is and not be afraid of feeling because the more that you can actually breathe into whatever the emotion is. So one of the things I teach people to do is that, you know, those who have been with me will, will like, they'll tell you that I'm like, they're like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm feeling this way. I'm like, no, it's great. Let it out. Because if you don't let it out, you hold it in. And if you hold it in, then you do yourself a disservice. And then that's when you're staying stressed and you create chronic stress for yourself. So one of the main ways to know that you're in a relaxed state is feel your body, feel how your body feels. And if you feel like your shoulders are up in the ears, if you feel like you have stressed muscles, if you aren't sleeping, um, if you're constantly um, replaying the same thought over and over again, like, you know, when I'm really stressed, I'll have at least five or 10 different to-do lists with all the same thing on it. So maybe if I'm not feeling it, all I have to do is take a look at the 10 lists and I've probably lost two. Then I know that I am, I'm really worried about something. Okay. So, okay. Cindy says the chat has been resolved. And so you can put information there if you'd like. Um, so, so if the very first thing to do is to figure out your own signs of stress. There's a, we, I have a, um, somebody that I've been working for. If you go to the American Institute of Stress, you can take, they have two um, stress assessments available for free. One of them, Stress Master, is one that I've used with my clients for over 25 years. And so you can go in and take the assessment and the information is there for you. And then I just noticed, so this is fairly new, there's a second stress assessment that is available for you to take. So if you're wondering, it's really great. That's a, a, a great way to replay the tape is to say, ah, okay, answer these questions, see how I'm answering it because sometimes we don't always recognize and not to beat yourself up if you don't recognize. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna do um, a, a breath, a breath work exercise. So for most people, um, thank you. I appreciate you too, Achilles. Um, we're gonna do an exercise and I will share with you what app I'm using uh, to help with um, slowing the breath down. So where I start with most of my clients is what I call the 10 second breath. So you're breathing in for 10 seconds and then you're breathing out for 10 seconds. Um, and so in order to, I ask people to close their eyes. You don't have to, but the reason why I ask people to close their eyes is because then they go inward. And one of the things that we know for sure is that the moment you close your eyes, you move out of what is known as a beta state of consciousness. And this is that part that think, 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 gotta, 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 gotta. This is called your executive brain. And it, it creates beta brain waves. So the moment you close your eyes, your brain automatically, because it's no longer processing information it sees, it automatically moves a little bit further back into what um, is in the corpus callosum area. That, that place is where the soft spot was when you were a baby. And so the whole brain thinking begins to occur. That's called an alpha rhythm. And this is the, the place where athletes go when they are in peak performance. And so the moment we close our eyes, because we are getting rid of some of the noise just through our eyes, our, our brain begins to shift down inside of ourselves. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And just for a moment, just notice your breath. Are you breathing high in your chest? Are you taking a full breath? Is your breath fast? 
as I'm asking these questions, is your breath slowing down? So see if you can feel your heart beating. See if you can relax those shoulders, roll them back and down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a meditation. You're going to hear music and you're going to hear a ding. And when you hear the ding, just very slowly, gently, deeply breathe in. And we're going to do this for five minutes or four minutes. And then we're going to, when you hear the second ding, breathe out. So I'm going to do that three times. And then I'm going to stop talking. Because the more I talk, the more your prefrontal cortex is going to engage versus just paying attention to your breath and your body. So exhaling. So you breathe in. and out and as you breathe out mouth open through your nose whichever way feels good breathing in deeply gently slowly exhale feel your shoulders dropping feel your face relaxing and in, and out, letting go of thoughts, tension you don't need, and in, and out in and let go let go let go and I'm going to be silent now And now taking a long, deep breath in and holding your breath. 
And as you release, just imagine all of the stress just drains away. And one more time, a deep breath, the biggest breath you'll take in today. And then exhaling a long, slow, the longest exhale you'll take today. And one last time at your own pace. And exhaling. Now, I hope you were able to get into what I like to call the slows, get a little bit slower. That was almost four minutes for most people. Just focusing on the breath, the moment you start doing that, the mind starts to become a little bit more quiet. You may feel like that was too fast. You might have felt it was too slow. What I like about this app is that you get to set it at the breath pace that feels most comfortable for you. Breathing 10 seconds in and 10 seconds out puts you at three breaths per minute. For some people, four breaths is the sweet spot. So you can actually set this, and I don't own this app at all, um, but you can set this so that it fits and you can put the music that you want that fits what's um, important for you. And so the more you can do that, the more you will, just by controlling your breath and allowing to re yourself to release, the more that you'll get centered and grounded in yourself, then you can replay the tape, then you can get into a place of your own inner agility and your own inner wisdom. And when you have that, it makes it easier to solve the issues that you're facing, whether it's personal or professional. And so these would be two apps I'd recommend. Um, I have been big fans of both of these apps and, um, and I'll answer that question in a moment. Uh, HeartMath, I think right now still it's about 150. It's an app that you put an electrode on your ear and it will measure your heart rate variability. It measures your um, beats per minute. And so then you can set the timer in order to find the breath that will give you the heart rate variability that is, um, that's right for your own body and to help you reset. So I just call that techno meditation and, um, I really like this particular app. I take it, I take the electrode wherever I go. And many times I just have it on, on the plane. And then the Serenity app, I haven't looked at it. I've owned this, the Serenity app for about 10 years. And I think it was $4 at the time. Haven't looked. I don't know if it's $9 or $20, but it's got four presets so that you can, you know, you could go seven by seven by seven by seven if you want. Or me, I have 10 second dings. You can change the ding and all of that. So um, somebody asks, how often do you recommend uh, meditating per day? Um, I personally like at least a half hour and I start my day with it. And, um, but if you, uh, you know, like exercise a half hour to get your heart rate up, you know, if you did exercise one day for 30 minutes, meditation, 30 minutes the next day, at least if you do something like this, five, six minutes a day, every day, it adds up. Because if you felt yourself slow down in four minutes and your body will retain this state for a while, unless something really big comes up, your body will retain this slower pace for a while until you, until you get running again. So you, you carry that benefit with you in terms of um, the building of your immune system. So. If you want help for yourself personally, or if you want help for your team in terms of how do you build resilience inside of your organization to help improve um, by learning about mindfulness and mindful leadership and how all that comes together. Um, if you want, Cindy and I will do a strategy call with you on what could be your next best steps for yourself. Um, we could also give you some more tips and tools and ideas. And if you email us at real at lcbgroup.com, we'll get you 30 minutes on our, on our calendar. But um, I hope you found that helpful. I personally um, 
my day doesn't feel right unless I've done, like some of you, your day doesn't feel right unless you've done your, your exercise. I prioritize my meditations and my yoga over my exercise, which sometimes that's not always good either. But um, because I, what I'm going for is, you know, I know I carry a lot on my plate. I want to be in the best place on the inside of myself. So I show up the way I want to show up with my clients, with my main business partner, Cindy, and I don't chop her head off from time to time and with my employees. And so with that, I said it was 15 minutes. I'm happy to stay on and answer any additional questions, but that's all I have for you. And I really appreciate you giving us your, your time today. And so with, uh, um, Okay, as always, all right, and thank you so much. And again, if you want to just reach out to us and we will help you, thank you so much, Tommy. Appreciate that. You know, big hugs to you and Cordelia, big hugs to you as well. Um, oh, wow, what a great way to end the week. And Cindy, did you know that our sister was on this one? I did not know that, so, okay. And Yangbo, we just met. Nice to meet you, see you again. Thank you so much. And I'm going to be doing more of these as we go on. And Teresa, thank you as well. And enjoy. So uh, the, those two apps, I'd recommend them. You know, the Serenity app, it's, I, I do that on planes. Sometimes it is the only meditation I do because I know that if I, if I control my breath, I'm going to get there. I'll get centered again. I'll get grounded again. So thank you so much. And have a great weekend. Jan, hi. It was great to have you here. Okay. All righty. Barb, thank you too. And again, be on the lookout. Cindy and I want to do more of these as we go on. We didn't do them. We haven't done them for a year. And so we're going to do more of these, mixing different things up. So uh, we know that mindfulness, stress reduction are always hot topics. And, um, you know, simple meditations. And that's really why we did this on a Friday. So I, well, if we can get it at the end of the day and just do a little meditation and be like, okay, I can go into the weekend. Okay. Ciao, everyone. <laughs>